everyone. Welcome to season four of Streaming Alchemy. It's been a while getting here, but I am really happy to be back. So on today's show, we're going to take a look at ways to create dynamic lower thirds, basically lower thirds that no matter what you have set to program, the right layout and content will be displayed for you when you call up a lower third. Uh, in addition, we're going to be doing this for both vMix and for TriCaster. So this will be expanding a bit on some of the things we cover. But before we get into that, uh, I want to invite everybody. If uh, you have any comments, have any questions, please just post them in the comments as we go along, and I'll try to get to everything as we get through the show. Uh, also, if you'd like to join us on air to call in, uh, you, we have a call-in number now, a basically a, a, a URL you can go to, and somebody from the studio here will get you on air with us. So, ah, good to get back. So, to get started, uh, I want to talk a bit about exactly what we're going to be, be doing here. And probably the best way to do that would be to just show you uh, on screen what this output is going to look like as we, as we do everything. So, what we wanted to have set up uh, and I'll do this, you know, in, in vMix to start here. What we want to have set up was a way where whatever I put into program, I would have the right lower third. So effectively, I can come back and say, let me turn on a lower third here so you can see the, the lower third sitting over here. So if I just switch between, I can switch between, uh, oh, I, I, so I have a camera here that is covering me. Uh, I have this Lady Becca McGinnis is our caller. Uh, we have a, uh, a guest potentially here. And then we have individual uh, shots uh, for the caller and the guest. And we even have a three box. And you can see as we moved through each of those, you actually got the right lower third. So if you had this set up some way, you'd always know you were, you were covered with this. So how do we do that? Uh, there's, there's a few things we did here, so uh, why don't we dive into the, uh, the vMix side first, and I'll go through exactly what we're doing here. So the first thing uh, is if you look at how we have this set up, we have all these individual inputs, and we built these multi-boxes just through layers and positioning, so very standard things that we did. We also have here at the the bottom, we have all the different lower thirds. So this is sort of, as I switch through here, uh, this is the lower third that we have for the full uh, layout. This is the lower third we have for sort of a boxed single person. This is our two box lower third, and this is our three box lower third. So we have all of these laid out in uh, basically the way we'd, we'd want to have them. The trick to doing this is that, as opposed to having to figure out which one of these to put up as a, as a lower third and make the switches, what we did here uh, is we s created a stacked uh, input right here of all the lower thirds. So if you, let me go into the layers here. If you can see here, what we've done is we have all of our lower thirds set up here. And to activate a lower third as part of our uh, sort of overlay, we always overlay this combined thing. But what we will do is based on which guest we have, uh, which layout we have, and which guest, we will select which layer we want to make visible. And we do that through a small, simple script that will cover that. So that's that's basically the general model for what we're doing. The other thing is we are using data link. Uh, uh, well, basically, we ju we're just using uh, the, the data source manager to pull in the data for these lower thirds. So this is just data that's coming from a CSV file. And to sort of go over this again for everybody, uh, if you go down to this little hamburger menu on the bottom and go to data sources manager, uh, you can basically create a, a data source by 
you know, clicking here, saying what type of file you have, uh, and then you point to that file, and you can format the data. And so if I come here, uh, what we have is we have this file, uh, which is a CSV file that we pulled in, and we're just using this to pull all of the, the data out here. So very, very simple to do. So you can see here the data that we have from this file for the three callers, for my, myself, the host, the caller, and our guests coming in. So that's, uh, that's basically everything we have set up in our back end. So how do we trigger this? A uh, couple of things, and trigger is really the key word. Anytime, so what you'll see here is if I, uh, let me cut to something different. When I do the cut, so I'm not, this is now, I'm not doing anything with like hotkeys or anything. If I just cut to any one of these sources, we'll go over here and we'll cut to the two box, you now see that everything is still going with it. And the way we're doing that is associated with each one of these inputs, uh, we have a trigger. And this trigger, oh, let's go here. Okay, so this trigger does two things. So uh, when we have, so sort of on transition in, so as we load that input into the, uh, the program out, the first thing we do is we say, well, what type of layout does this program need? Does this uh, uh, input need when it's, when it's on program? And so in this case, it's a three box. So we're saying, let's run a script that will basically show the three box background. And if I do this here, so let's so we'll, we'll sort of jump in to the scripts in a second. But once we have that, then we say, okay, and who is this guest? So let's select the right title preset. And that's something uh, that we're doing now. So we run a script and we select a title preset. So if you remember in vMix, if you go into any one of your uh, inputs, you have are down here basically title presets. So inside of vMix, we can go in and when we take each one of these names and titles in Data Sources Manager, we can go and say, what am I mapping to that? So in this case, I'm mapping the third row, the second row, the first row. So it's just very clearly, I'm taking the name and putting that in and picking the row that this guest is in. And so when we go in and select this input, uh, no matter how it gets into program, that trigger happens and you end up pulling up the right data and pulling up the right layout. And for the right layout, let me sort of jump over to scripting over here. For the right layout, we just have a set of boxes. So let's look at the three box one that we have. So. It's very, very simple as a script here. All we're doing is we're saying, turn one of these layers on, basically the layer with the three box background where the three different semi-transparent segments, uh, and turn off all the others. So that's all we're doing. So on each one of these that come in, we turn one segment off, uh, and we turn one segment on and turn all the others off, and we should be good there. So that's, that's basically uh, everything that we have going here. So a simple script, uh, and we go to the different data sources, uh, and we pick which, uh, uh, which data source we want to map, and then we go and pick the presets that we have for each one of these. And that's basically it. That's all we've done to do this in vMix. And because of this, it's very simple, now, no matter whether I'm touching a control surface, whether I'm using a stream deck, whether I'm just clicking on the UI, I will always have the right URL, sorry, the right uh, overlay for the lower third uh, available on screen. And then you can just toggle it on and off. So when I need it, I just bring it up and I know the right one is going to be there no matter what I do. All right, so this seems like a good time to uh, jump in and, and, and talk about some of the uh, comments that we have here. So thank you, everybody, for... Uh, Participating here, I really love this. So let's see. So we have uh, uh, Ryo Caster. Uh, he's come up and said, uh, let's see. Uh, 
This is the best notification for the day. <laughs> Glad to know you're back. Well, it is good to be back, Ryo. Thank you very much for, for joining us here live. So uh, we have uh, Hakan uh, Fors. Uh, he is from joining us from Stockholm, Sweden. Uh, well, uh, thank you for uh, you know the the well wishes here. You know we are we're pretty excited about what we're going to be doing this season. So thanks for joining us. Uh, we now have uh, Very Scott. Uh, thank you. Yes, uh, I have a bit of a woohoo here myself. I'm very very happy to be back with all of this. So this is great. Uh, we have JP, uh, JP Danette. JP, uh, thank you. Glad to see all of you again, uh, uh, albeit virtually, but this is, this is a lot of fun for me. And then we have uh, Philippe uh, is calling, uh, is commenting from Bogota. So Philippe, hello, thank you. Uh, let's see, oh, we also have JP just uh, threw up another thing. He says, can you consider doing a tutorial on using XML feeds as data sources for titles for Colon Manager? The challenge is using the XML tags. Actually, I can, and that's something uh, that I probably will be doing pretty shortly, just because we've had a lot of people ask about using XML and live to air. So that's definitely something uh, we can demonstrate. And it's really just a, a pretty straight walkthrough. So, uh, yep, so uh, with, uh, you know, with colon one, I mean, this is, uh, JP, I believe you're, you're doing a, a trial on colon one. Uh, so yes, this, the XML works. I can show you exactly how to tie that in uh, without any issue at all. So we will cover that shortly. Okay, so uh, we got through the first piece with vMix pretty quickly. And in and, and large part, that's because we all have been talking about vMix for most of the past two seasons. So the next piece that I want to jump into is basically doing the exact same thing here but this time doing it on a new Tech TriCaster. So sort of new in our studio uh, for doing demos, we have a, uh, a TC2 that we're gonna be able to do uh, all sorts of different TriCaster-based tutorials as well. So we figured a great way to start in on the TriCaster side is to mirror what we've done on the vMix side. So the parallels would become clearer between the two systems. So let's switch over to, uh, actually there's one more comment here. Sorry if I, I jumped. Uh, so uh, Very Scott just asked, uh, may I ask what the status of colon one is? I'm very eager to try it out. So Scott, we, we are probably going to be putting it up live on our site uh, within the next couple of weeks. So we're, we're talking uh, definitely in June for its go live date. So, uh, and of course, if you, if you do want a, free trial, that's available on the site. Just go over to neuralnet.com and you'll be able to sign up. So thanks for asking, Scott. Okay, so let's go over to the TriCaster now and we'll take a look over here. So uh, let me try to do something which is not just me sitting here. <laughs> so uh, let's see, we'll pull up somebody else here. There we go. Okay, so we have a multi-box with two people here now as our output. So if you look at the TriCaster UI, you'll see some things that are fairly different from the vMix uh, UI approach. So the first thing, which is probably the most significant, is that inside the TriCaster, as opposed to just adding inputs, you basically have a fixed set of slots, and I can assign a different source to any one of those slots. So vMix is sort of very open-ended. The TriCaster has more structure to it. And that, I think, is something that, that's, that's pretty important uh, for different purposes. So in the TriCaster universe, if I am working with uh, different types of crews and I need to have people that could sit down and just work with a TriCaster, it is far more intuitive than vMix because it works very much the way a broadcast solution works. Though, if you want to do some insanely crazy things, uh, vMix gives you a lot of flexibility to go off and to do some uh, incredibly complex and convoluted uh, looping of video and overlays. So, uh, 
basically two different approaches targeting two different audiences. So let me talk a little bit now in detail about how this UI works. Down here in this bottom segment, uh, I don't know if you can see the mouse or not, but you can see things flashing over here. So uh, what, you, what you have are our basic program and preview buses. And on this bus, I can turn around and say, which source do I want coming out? So I can have any one of the sources that we have coming in. We have you know, a bunch of blank ones that are sitting here that we're not using. Uh, you also have video players. So again, with vMix, you can just load a video into an input and just use it. Uh, you have four video players here on the TC2, and you can put whatever video you want in there. But it has more complex lists and other things you can do with that. And then the last thing you have is you have eight MEs. And an ME is basically a mix effects input. This is very much like the layers inside of vMix. So you have eight of these. And the way these mix effects work is that you can place things into, uh, you can have up to four uh, rows in the mix effect. And then you can have four downstream keys dedicated to that mix effect. So sort of a different, different layout. So that just trying to give everybody a general overview. The way that you do lower thirds and other graphics on the TriCaster is something called buffers. And so a buffer is basically a lightweight input that you can load graphics into. So if I, let's call up one of these buffers here, see if I can show this here. Uh, let's see, we'll call up buffer, what do I want? Okay, we'll call it buffer seven here, because that's, uh, there we go. So now you can see, I, it's a little hard to, to see here, but uh, you have uh, just an, a name and a title in here on the bottom, because this is just a, very similar to the graphics we had over in vMix. So when you load this, one of the things you get inside of this is the ability, like you can put in different data presets inside of vMix, you have basically the same thing here on the TriCaster. I can go in and I can say, this is the graphic that I have as a layout. I can have different presets that are set up. And if you'll notice, the way it works in TriCaster land, as opposed to going to something like Data Source Manager, where you actually do the mapping, what the TriCaster has is something called Data Link. And Data Link will look at a single folder and will take any one of the files that are in that folder and try to decompose it into name value pair data elements. So it sort of handles that on the back end and, and lets you effectively pull any data you want from any file that's in that folder. And the way you handle that, if I sort of click on this here, as opposed to saying John Mahoney here, what it actually says is percent hostname percent. So what this is, we said it's name value pairs. So this is the name that has a value associated with it, that pairing. And so all that the TriCaster does in this case is it uses data link, its data management framework, to go in, gives it a name, and says, give me the value associated with this name. And so all we've done in these data presets is I've actually set this up with different data link values. So the first says, take whatever the host name is. If I go to preset two uh, over here, now you can see, as opposed to saying host name, now it says caller name. And so that's the name. So when you set up these data presets, you could just type in hard data. So say you wanted certain things like messages that you use all the time, you could put those in, but you can also put in variables. And so when you switch between your different data presets, you now can sw switch between a mapped value through data link or a fixed value that you typed in. So that's part of the mechanism that we're going to leverage here. So how do we actually handle this inside of the TriCaster? So for the TriCaster, we're using what TriCaster has called a macro system, very similar to sort of a hybrid between vMix shortcuts and vMix scripting. So if I go up here and look at the macros, I'm thinking macros here. 
we just set up a set of macros very similar to the macros that we set up inside of uh, vmix. And so we have them for the different one box, if it's the caller, the guest, the host, uh, the two box for host caller, host guest, and then we have the three box with everybody. And then uh, essentially this gives us now the ability to pick uh, whichever ones of these we want through scripting. And I'll, I'll just give you a, a sense of what's inside of here. So let's look at the, the two box host plus call. I'm just gonna edit this on here. So I know we're digging a few layers down, but uh, so what this is basically doing, so this is a little more cryptic than some of the things that we dealt with on the vMix side. So I'm basically turning around and saying, which layout do I want to use? And we'll come to that in a moment. And then which downstream key do I need to correspond to that layout? So what overlay? Is it a two box? Is it a three box? Whatever I need. Uh, and which data preset for that is going to be associated with it. Uh, and then I just turn around and put it up on the main row. So let me explain, because this is not as clear as we probably like to see normally. So inside of vMix, I take one of these MEs, and this is part of the power that's inside the ME structure inside of vMix. Uh, so we're using, I, I, we're using, you know, in, in the TriCaster here. So we have ME1. So that's our mix effect that we have all of these layouts in. So one of the things that's in the mix effect is something called compositions or comps. And what a composition is, is it's basically, it lets you take and describe the layout of all of the inputs you have and all of the overlays. And you can resize them, reposition them, put them any way you want. And then you can dynamically switch between them. So if we can jump to the output here uh, with the, uh, so if you see, if I move between these, we have, this is very similar to what you've seen with the vMix merge, where you have all of these different layouts in here. And so what we wanted was no matter which composition that we had, we'd wanted to be able to make sure that we had the right a lower third available for it. And that's how we work with this. So we're using these as compositions and switching between the compositions. And when we do that, we make sure we have all the right elements uh, for the lower third. So if you, if you look at when I set up these macros, uh, what the macros are basically doing is it's taking and, uh, so we'll just edit this one, which is simple. It's basically saying, which composition do I want? So in this case, I said I want composition number five. Uh, and then it's putting the right buffers and the right presets and all that for this because this is for the, the caller. So that's basically all it's doing. It's picking which one of those layouts that I want, saying which buffer has the right lower third layouts to correspond to that. And for the content of this, which preset am I using? So it lets me make sure that I'm covering exactly what I want to do uh, with the data. So the layout and the data both change, and then it just puts that live. So uh, if you look at this, you know, when I sit here in action, if I turn and toggle on the lower third here, now when I'm going between all of these comps, uh, you'll now see that these are all just switching with the correct uh, lower thirds in place. The other thing that I can do though, and if you notice, if I go to any one of these basic inputs, I can just click and send one of them to the program and it actually is also doing that. So this is not using comps, it's not using macros, I'm just switching. This is again something, if you want to trace it equivalent, it's very similar to triggers inside of vMix. So this is called automation. So if I go to any one of these inputs, so let's go to this input up here and we can see when I click on this little gear for what I can do with it, uh, we have something called automation. And what this says is any time this condition is met, any time for this input, this condition is met. It's on the program row. It's in the preview. It's in one of the ME rows. So you can set up it's in an ME row A or it's in a downstream key. 
I can trigger a macro that will very specifically say, what do I want? So in this case, when this goes into the program row, what I do is say, when it goes into the program row, I want you to put this lower third full preset macro. Uh, and that's basically saying preset two is for the caller. So we have, like, if you look at the inputs over here, one, two, three, that's basically it. So preset two is for the caller. So I'm saying when it goes in, set up the lower third for the caller here. Uh, you could also do things to say, I want to do something different when it leaves. Uh, and so that's, you know, a fairly nice feature, but you have that for all of these different triggers. So basically the same way when you do the drop down, when you have a trigger for an input, if you want to do it on completion, you want to do it on transition in, on transition out, this gives you sort of a rough equivalent in the TriCaster world for how to do all of this stuff. Uh, so that is effectively how we've done the same thing. We've taken, put the lower thirds and buffers, created macros to trigger all the different comps and make sure they have the right lower third buffer uh, associated. And we did this all in this case by just using here our main downstream key on our entire output. So if you notice, as I sort of keep the mouse over here, if I go and I change what I have moving through here, you can see that this downstream key is changing. And that's how we're doing this. We, when we go and say, what buffer am I assigning to downstream key one? And that's part of what that macro script is doing. It's basically changing that buffer there and then picking the right uh, data preset. So this was not a very long show. Uh, it has definitely taken us a while to, to get back. But I wanted to do something that started to draw some equivalences between how you do things on a vMix system and how you do them on a TriCaster. Uh, we have been using TriCaster internally uh, forever. <laughs> so uh, we, we love vMix and you know, it does a lot of things for us as you know, a tool in our sort of production toolkit. But you know, our main production here is switched on TriCaster. And so we really wanted to start demonstrating more of those capabilities as we go through this uh, season. And hopefully you found this one useful as well. So before I wrap up, uh, let me just see. We have a few more comments, I think. Uh, so let's see. Ryo Casta said, more on data manager. He says, the format tab there is, uh, is bracket zero. I figured out that we can add info before and after the zero and it'll change the output info. Is there anything else you can share about that? So let me see if we're talking, I, I'm trying to see which uh, data input I had the zero on. So uh, got this data manager here. Oh, sorry. So in data sources manager, is this what you were talking about? Uh, I just want to be sure I'm in the right spot. So we're not we're not using. Uh, oh, I understand now. Sorry, I now I know what you're talking about. You're talking about if I were to come into here and go into the title editor. Okay, so yes, inside inside of all of these, you can you can do different types of uh, formatting. So especially if this is something like a a numbered source. Uh, this would be something that you could you could definitely uh, change the formatting on. Let me see if I have something here uh, that I could could do a, a demonstration of this on. So, yeah, let let's see. I'll just put. So I'll screw this up. <laughs> let's just take this, and what I'll turn, turn around and say, I want to do this as a uh, as a clock. So. What this will uh, now do is you have formatting here that you can use to change how you want this layout to work. So in this case, if you sit here and say, uh, I want to do hours, minutes, and seconds, what the small h's are saying is, I want to do this as 12 hour uh, time, so you know a.m. and p.m. Uh, you can also, if you do, uh, so let's sort of go back to the clock. I can do 24-hour uh, time, and then you notice 
what the, it did to change formatting is it put uh, capital H's here, and that says use 24 hour versus 12 hour. So some subtle little things there. Uh, the other thing though that you have is you have things like countdowns. So doing the formatting here, what this is saying is, okay, we can do a countdown to 3 p.m. Uh, and we wanna show that in 24 hour time with hours, minutes, and seconds. So if you wanted something that would happen there. Uh, so this is really just a way to take typically date information. I believe it may work for other types of information, uh, but date, day and, time and date is, is typically what this is used for and, and make formatting changes for how you want that. So if I didn't wanna see the hours at all, I could turn around and say, okay, let's just take the hours out of here. Uh, and well, to, to make this work, let me see if I can uh, sort of call this title up. Uh, is that, I'm trying to remember which one it was, probably this one. So if I, I put this up, yes, so now you can see that uh, it's doing a countdown here with 28 minutes and 31 seconds till 3 p.m. So this is giving us sort of a, an easy way to to change the formatting. But if I, I went in here and I wanted this to be with, you know, with hours or other things, you'd have, you'd have all of that there as well. So that's just a, uh, a, a quick overview of that. There is a link, I can, I can try to post it uh, in comments after, which describes all the different layouts. Uh, this is something that's sort of a Microsoft published standard for how to do some of this formatting. So that's really where they, they took that from. So. Let's see, uh, well, so hopefully, and so if I, I didn't cover everything, we'll, we'll jump, we can jump in again in the post show. So uh, if, if, uh, if you wanna dig deeper, happy to do that. So let's see, we have uh, spatial optic. Uh, <laughs> yes, uh, another woohoo. I, I, I have a lot of woohoos. I am very, very happy to, to have the show back on. So thank you everyone for the well wishes with, with coming back. So we have uh, Deadline AV uh, saying, good topic, thanks. So we're, we're, we're always looking for different types of topics. I mean, we've covered a lot of things in the past. And so some of the things that we're gonna introduce with the TriCaster will give us some latitude for recovering ground that we've covered before, but for vMix and sort of thinking of it differently and potentially updating some of the approaches. But uh, glad you enjoyed this one. Uh, and. Uh, very Scott said it was a great first show back. Uh, he'll definitely be subscribing to call in one once it's released. So that's that's excellent. So yeah, so the price point will be consistent. Uh, the way we're pricing call in one uh, is that it's ninety nine dollars a year, or you get it free when you purchase live to air. So uh, any version, the six channel or the twelve channel. So it's just a really an an easy way, low risk way to to get in and start to work with the live to air ecosystem. But uh, then if you want to jump in, you know, you, we, can, we can take that money off if you, you know, have part of the year or whatever, and we'll, we'll get you onto live to air. So, good. So, what, uh, why don't we call this a wrap for today? Uh, and we'll just head over to our post show and we can talk more casually about what I've been doing for the last six months, uh, any other topics you have that you, you'd like us to, to cover on the show or anything we've covered that you want to have a little more detail on. So I'll see you in a, a few. All right, we are back in the post show. Uh, I, I just want to say one thing. We, we're not getting any of the comments coming in through Facebook. So my apologies. But I was told that uh, Richard over on Facebook uh, said, hi, we can't post it here. But Richard, we appreciate you watching over on Facebook. And thank you very much for joining us live. It's, uh, it was great uh, having you come on to uh, you know, join us today for the show. So uh, a little 
background now. Uh, we took a lot longer to get back online than we thought. Uh, we were just overloaded with things that we needed to get done on the business side. So definitely appreciate the patience there. We also have been doing a lot of work in the studio. So we have sort of a totally new sessions for everything we're doing uh, with the show, all the new elements we put in, different layouts in the studio. So all of these things just took a lot longer than we thought. <laughs> so uh, thank you all for being so patient with everything. And, uh, you know, hopefully now we will be able to get back on our, our regular Fridays at 2 p.m. schedule. So what else is there that I wanted to, to share? I, I think a big piece of what motivated this was I know that we've touched on things in the TriCaster world before, but we never really have done that deep a dive into the TriCaster framework and how all the different components of TriCaster interact. And because a lot of folks that watch the show are, are coming from the vMix side, I felt it was good to do something that created this sort of parallel between everybody here. Uh, we have uh, basically the, this type of show allowed us to touch on most of the key elements inside of the TriCaster. So macros, automation, and sort of triggering on, on inputs. It like, talked about buffers. It talked about lower thirds and data presets. Uh, it talked about MEs and sort of the general things we do with MEs. Uh, and we do have a lot more we're going to do and sort of show off different ways that you can leverage these capabilities to do things that all of us are, are working on sort of with, you know, traditional productions as well as some of the, the hybrid productions. Uh, so <laughs> Barry Scott saying, uh, nothing ever goes as planned. Don't sweat it. Uh, yeah, I can I can tell you, Barry Scott, that there was there was some real sweating going on for some of this stuff. It was just, uh, you know, we've been doing some. Uh, yeah, I'm happy to to share. This is this is sort of our our community here. So we were doing a lot of back end work on our live to air system. Uh, so there was basically a major rewrite of all of our back end. Uh, to, to scale up better because we, we, we really sort of position ourselves to the, the next push forward. So that's something that we're going to be rolling out later this year, but we needed to get all those elements in place. And we've just had a lot of, you know, sort of smaller updates, but very important updates, both in terms of uh, features as well as terms of performance. Uh, so a lot of things that, that went into that and, you know, the testing that goes around all of that. So that was really, you know, a big piece of that. And then we wanted in starting this next season to have, you know, enough new things baked in so people, you know, feel that, uh, you know, we're continuing to invest and in evolve the show. So that was all part of what we were, were working on. So yeah, some of the stuff was, you know, you. You you get and say oh this 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 time schedule is is was a little bit of uh, aggressive or optimistic on certain things, but I mean the good news is we we really are in a good position with everything we we had, uh, you know the call in one sh like I said should be out really shortly, uh, and you know that's again stuff that nothing just rolls out in a business on its own so you know we're going to have the collateral that goes with that the ability to to get that as part of the trials and do all that. So all of these things are, are all pieced together as part of the, the workflow we have on the business end. So, uh, and it's really funny when you, when you think about any operation, any technical operation, there are basically complex workflows. So we talk about it a lot here uh, for the things that we, you know, we do in the production space, but it's true really in any technology-based infrastructure. That you're, that you're counting on and managing. They all have workflows, and those workflows always need to be debugged. But uh, so this was, uh, this, this seemed like a good show to start with, though, uh, coming back to, you know, the, the intention that behind this. And uh, hopefully you saw it as something that was useful as well. Uh, 
we have uh, things that we, we're looking to do on a few fronts this season. Uh, so I mentioned stuff where we, we want to look at some of the things with, with AI. So if you, uh, ha you know, we're watching some of the video that we put together for our lead-in, uh, for our pre-show, and for the between the show and the post-show. Uh, those are videos that we put together using DaVinci Resolve. So one of the other things that I want to dive into this season as well is a bit of DaVinci Resolve and a lot of the AI tools that are in there because I think we've really talked a lot about the streaming aspect and sort of the, the live production piece. Uh, but we haven't really talked a lot about the pre-production and some of the post-production, like creating shorts that you may want to put up and share, uh, you know, which just have clips and how, how can you do that and sort of process and edit that. So we are very, very impressed with Resolve. We've been using it now about three years. Uh, and where it has gone in these last three years is pretty incredible. And as a part of that, there's a lot of AI that is being built into Resolve. Uh, some really incredibly impressive things uh, that it can, it can now do. So we want to share a lot of that. And, you know, I'm actually thinking of doing that for a show, just sort of some of the uh, uh, sort of a basic intro to something in Resolve to get that kicked off. So we'll touch on each of the key points we want for this, uh, for this season. But that's, uh, that's something else that we're going to be doing. And uh, we're really looking forward to that. So if you have specific things that you would like us to cover, vMix, TriCaster, pre, post, anything, uh, we're, we're happy to sort of fit that into our calendar and, and try to build shows around that. So please feel free. Uh, you can just send that to john at uh, neural.com or john at streamingalchemy.tv. Uh, both of those will get to me. And, you know, we can sort of take it from there. Uh, let's see. Uh, so very Scott just saying, were you always using TriCaster for your shows? Or was it vMix in the past? No, we were, we were always using TriCaster. So uh, when we launched the show, uh, we, we launched it on TriCaster. We actually had, uh, we go way back in the TriCaster universe. Uh, so we, we started out with uh, the... Uh, the toaster on the uh, Commodore Amiga, <laughs> then the toaster flyer, which recorded, then uh, uh, the New Tech video toaster, and then we got into the TriCaster line. And we started with the, uh, the TC850 and have moved along from there. So uh, now we use several TriCasters here, but it's always been sort of the heart of what we do, you know, from a production side for the, for the show. So, uh, but... Thanks for asking. And, you know, this is something where I can sort of spend some time deconstructing how we assembled our whole show and some of the things there, because that may be, be interesting to, to folks as well to see how are we pulling together everything that's going on in our back end. And I did promise a studio tour, so that is something else we will have this season as well. So let's see. Uh, JP has a th it's another suggestion. It's a tutorial on using the audio buses in vMix with colon one. Uh, so show audio goes to guests uh, minus their voice. Yeah, th so that's probably, I think, JP, since you're, you're talking about this, it probably makes sense to do a sort of call-in-one with vMix. Uh, and uh, we can certainly, you know, sort of do something similar to what we've done today where we can do it with vMix and we can do it with the TriCaster. And I think that will create a sort of a, a broad enough set of content to, to make a show out of that. So let me just add that in and we'll, we'll get that on, we'll get that on our list. Uh, so JP, thank you. So let's see. So we have, uh, so yeah, so very Scott is saying, whoa, that's way back. Yes. Uh, that, that is way back. Uh, I, I think, uh, we are probably talking, well over 30 years <laughs> uh, with the original uh, Amiga. So, I mean, so this is, this is funny because I thought the big upgrade is you went from the Amiga to, I think it was the, the Amiga 2000. 
uh, or maybe even 3,000. I forget. I forget that. that was like the big uptick in, in processing power. But uh, yes, so it, that, does, that does go quite a way back. So we have uh, Samuel uh, Nordvik. Uh, hello from Norway. Uh, Samuel, thank you for joining us live. And for, again, uh, I'm impressed when people take time out of their Friday nights as they wrap up their week to, to join us live. So thank you for doing that. Definitely appreciate it, Samuel. So, all right. So I think uh, this was a shorter show, but uh, hopefully everybody found it interesting. Uh, so we'll probably give this a wrap. Uh, if you have any less questions or comments, just get them in now. So, uh, so what I think is we'll do, we'll do a show next week on DaVinci Resolve. I have a couple of target topics uh, for some things that might work with that, that could be good for doing some of the uh, pre and post work that you have to do for your productions. And uh, then I'll definitely look into uh, scheduling something with call in one. So, all right, everyone, thank you very much. It is fantastic to be back with all of you. I am really blessed to be uh, a part of this community and have all of you join me on Fridays and for the number of people that came back. This is uh, really impressive. So thank you all. So until next week, be safe, be well, see you then.